Okay, I'm doing a proof of concept for my vehicle accessory controller using the vehicle's own CAN bus. Um, what that is, CAN bus is a network within most vehicles today, or all of them, and is used for the different computers within the car to talk to each other. Um, what I've been doing lately is actually looking at the data that my Jeep Wrangler is sending over its CAN bus and figuring out what I can do with that. Uh, in this setup, what I have right here, this is a laboratory breadboard, and I've created my own CAN bus on this rail right here. So on the left is CAN high, on the right is CAN low. I've got two termination resistors. These are 100 ohms, usually you use 120, but this works for the small test. This little uh, component over here, this is a Raspberry Pi embedded Linux system. It's running an ARM-based processor. I also have on top here, sitting on the expansion board, a CAN bus controller board made by SK Pang Electronics. This has a microchip MCP2515 CAN controller and a 2551 CAN transceiver. These actually do the heavy lifting of talking to the CAN bus and then they give the data back to the microcontroller and CPU over a serial peripheral interface bus. Um, I'm not powering this through the breadboard, it's actually going to a USB wall board just because it takes quite a bit of power. The next step of the prototype would actually be what would be in the Jeep. Um, here's a relay module that I've got from a company called SaneSmart. Um, this is used a lot for Christmas lights and other amusements. Um, it's powerful enough for automotive, but only at 10 amps per relay, so it's not something you would use for a lot of accessories. But for a proof of concept purpose, it's perfect. Um, I have this wired to a 595 shift register, and this is only so that I can reduce the number of pins that my microcontroller needs to talk to it. This thing will take a serial peripheral interface data and convert it to up to 256 different values by cascading the chips. In this case, we only need eight output pins to drive this board. This is my actual microcontroller. This is an Arduino Uno, and it uses an 18 mega 328, I believe, microcontroller. It's a small 8-bit microcontroller running at 16 megahertz. It's actually fairly powerful and really, really cheap. This other board here is called a shield in Arduino speak. This is another CAN bus controller. It's actually made by the same people that made that one, um, at least from the design, but a company here uh, in Colorado called SparkFun actually built this board um, and sells it. This thing has a lot of different stuff on it. It's actually really cool from an application perspective. You've got the microcontrol or microchip uh, CAN controller and transceiver. You also have an SD card interface or micro SD card, a serial GPS interface, a serial LCD interface, a little four or five way joystick here, and then um, two different ways to get to the CAN bus, either through pins or through a standard DB9 connection. So what I've got wired up here, um, the white and the black wire are my ground and my 5 volts coming from the board. The other three wires are the actual SPI interface. So I'm only sending data out, I'm not receiving data in, so I only need two pins, clock and serial data. And then this third pin is the actual latch pin, the one that tells the chip to listen. So the way that these things work is they actually stack on top of each other. So I'll put the shield on top of this and uh, then put it up over the breadboard next to the other CAN bus. So stand by. Okay, we are back. And what I've done here is I've just placed my little prototype here on the breadboard. The only thing it's really doing with the breadboard is I'm tying into the CAN bus now. You can see through this wire. So theoretically, this Raspberry Pi and this Arduino should be able to talk to each other through the CAN bus. I've got power coming from the breadboard, power supply. Uh, and then that's it. And let's talk a little bit about this relay module and how the software that I've put on the Arduino will actually work. So this uh, relay module is by default energized when things are powered on. So what we'll see when we actually turn on the power is that all the indicator lights go on and you'll hear the click for all the relays actually turning on. But depending on how you wire each relay depends on if your accessory actually gets turned on or closed um, depending on how the relay energizes. So it's a little bit backwards when we do our test. Whenever I am turning an accessory on through my software, we'll actually see the indicator light go out. But other than that, it should make straight forward sense. Um, what I've done in the software that's on my microcontroller is I've set up eight different switches for different purposes. Switch number eight here, I've actually told the microcontroller I want always on. 
So whenever the power is applied to the board and the microcontroller, it will make sure that accessory is on. And that would be like a permanently wired accessory that has a toggle switch. You know, it's just going to come on whenever the car has power, no matter what. The others here, with the exception of one and three, so two and then four through seven, I've actually set up to only be energized or de-energized when the car itself is in run state. And the idea would be you turn the key, now you're in run state. Um, so those should stay lit until I actually send a command to the Arduino that says, hey, the car is running. Accessories uh, switches one and three. I'm pretending that those are actually wired to auxiliary lights that I want to come on with the high beam switch. So we'll try all that out. Um, so the way, you know, kind of big picture of what's happening here, pretend the Raspberry Pi is actually the car's computers itself. And this system is what would exist in the car. This little microcontroller would likely be in the cab somewhere. And this relay module would actually exist in the engine bay, most likely, uh, for your accessories. And it wouldn't use any of the car's electrical system at all to power the accessories. It would come straight from the battery to the relay board, like a lot of other aftermarket accessory switching systems are doing. But this controller would actually listen to the data messages in the car without altering the OEM wiring at all but it would be able to intercept that data and actually use it to change behavior. Okay, so now we're gonna power on the breadboard and the Arduino should set the relays to the initial state that they would happen on power up. Uh, effectively, as soon as it gets power, this board will turn everything to energize and then the Arduino should immediately turn off relay number eight and enable that switch and that would be like if the car was running a permanently run accessory. So we'll do that. All right, and you heard the relays fire, and you should be able to see the first seven indicator lights are lit. So, so far, so good. Um, what I'm going to do now is over here on my computer, I've actually got a session into my little microcontroller running Linux. And I'm going to send some commands that are exactly the commands that my car, my Jeep Wrangler, actually sends. This little message right here is what happens whenever it changes the exterior lights. Message ID 208 uh, in hexadecimal. The first byte is a bit field of the different lights that can go on and off in the car. And uh, if 20 is set like this, that actually means the high beams are turned on. So if I send this message, what I would expect, and again, I'm sending it from here, and this guy is listening, he should see that message and enable relays one and three. So I'll go ahead and send it. So you see the lights went off in relays one and three. And if I send another message, if I change it back to zero in the first byte, which is like all lights off, you see the Arduino saw that and it re-energized those relays and it would turn those lights off. So very cool, that's step one. Another step is um, I've actually recorded actual data from my Jeep and I can play that data back. Um, so what I'm going to do here, this is one that I recorded when I turned the key from just being on there to actually being in accessory mode. And this is going to send a bunch of data, not the least of which would be the data that tells everything else in the car to turn itself on, like say the radio. It's actually done through software, not through um, a physical switch anymore. So if I run that command, we should see a whole bunch of these lights go out. And there you go. So now if you can imagine the state of the vehicle, I've got this one always is on, these, and this one, turned on only because the car is now considered running. Very cool. Um, what's interesting, so if I actually keep this command running, oops, if you know don't know Linux, what I just did there is I put that command in the background, so it's running kind of like multitasking, or exactly like multitasking. And I'm going to send my high beam command on again. Let's see what happens. That was a little weird, and you heard the relays fire, but the light stayed on. What actually happened here is that I sent that command once, but the background process that's replaying the data is actually sending the opposite command fairly frequently, several times a second. And this is what the car does normally. It's constantly sending out status updates for the different modules. So if I actually want to intercept data and cheat like that, you know, I'm not 
quite getting the behavior I want because the car is still doing its own thing. Um, that's only for testing, you know, in the real world, the car would be the one generating these messages and it wouldn't matter. Um, so the last thing I'll do is I'll go ahead and stop that replay and then I will manually you look at what ID it is. I'm going to manually send the power off command. So 20B. And um, the way that works, if the value is 61, which is probably a bit field, but I haven't analyzed it yet, that means things are running. So if I sent that again, then we don't expect any change. But if I send 01, then you should actually see a change. And so I'm going to send that now. And there we go, all the lights are back on. And I could now send my high beam lights, there we go. So, very cool. Um, this is prototype step one, just proving that I've got code that works, it fires the relays like it should be doing. Uh, it's listening to data from the CAN bus. The next step is to take these three pieces, um, as is, put them in the Jeep, wire up one of my auxiliary lights to one of these uh, relays, and actually let the car send commands to my Arduino and see if that works. And that's proof of concept number two, and we'll do that next. Okay, here we are inside the cab of my Jeep Wrangler. And I've taken this prototype proof of concept that I was showing on the bench, and I have it hooked up in the car now. It's pretty precarious, but for proof of concept it will work. I have my CAN bus uh, tied into the Arduino here. These uh, wires here are something I ran, and they tie back into the radio harness. Um, that's how I'm getting to the CAN bus. I'm getting power from the USB port just because I don't have an external power supply for this other than that. Otherwise, this is exactly the same setup, with one exception. On switch one here, I've actually temporarily wired my auxiliary driving lights to this switch. Um, and now we've got the car running. So we can actually see there's the dash. You can see I've got the radio on. It's on Hair Nation. What I'm going to do, um, I'm going to flash the brights. And I've got another camera recording, uh, so we should be able to see the driving lights come on and off, but inside the cab here we'll actually see the indicator for uh, relay number one go off. So the brights are coming on. And uh, ignore the other lights, that's actually a little software bug that I just ran into. Um, but you can see indicator one went off, and if I release the brights, you can see it comes back on. Or did it? Yeah, a few little bugs there. So indicator, the flash, the lights are off. If I flash the brights, you can see indicator one goes on and off. Cool thing is over here on the console, if I flash the brights, aux one on comes on. If I release, the brights go out and aux one off shows up in the EVIC. So, that is effectively a working proof of concept inside the car, listening to data from the car, firing relays. Um, I'm obviously running into current issues with the Arduino powering these relays um, already, um, which makes perfect sense. This thing only puts out um, a few hundred milliamps, and this needs a little bit more than that. So I think that's some of the weirdness going on inside the car here. But, in general, it works.